from the Corinium Chief Analytics Officer Conference, Spring, San Francisco. It's the Cube. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with the Cube. We're in downtown San Francisco at the Corinium Chief Analytics Officer Spring Event. 2018, about 100 people, really intimate, a lot of practitioners sharing best practices about how they got started, how are they really leveraging data and becoming you know, digital tra digitally transformed, analytically driven, data driven. We're excited to have Vishal Morde, he's the VP of Data Science at Barclays. Welcome. Glad to be here. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So we were just talking about Philly, you're back in, in, uh, yes. in Delaware, and you, right. you actually had a session yesterday talking about Barclays' journey. Yes. So I wonder if you could share some of the highlights of that story with us. Absolutely. So we, I had a talk, I opened the conference with Data Science Journey at Barclays, and we have been on this journey for five years now where we transform our data and analytics practices and really harness the power of big data, machine learning, and advanced analytics. And whole idea was to use this power of uh, newly found power that we have to make the customer journey better. Better through predictive models, better through deeper and richer consumer insights, and better through you know more personalized customer experience. So that's uh, that was the story. I'd now it's interesting because we think of financial services right. as being a data-driven organization right. already. Right. You guys are way ahead. Right. You know, obviously Wall Street's right. you know trading on microseconds. So Absolutely. What what was different about right. this digital transformation right. than what you've been doing for right. for the past? I think the key was like we do have all the data in the world. If you think about it, banks know everything about you, right? You, we have our demographic data, behaviors data, from very granular credit card transactions data. We have your attitudinal data. But what we quickly found out that we did not have a strategy to use that data well to improve our own productivity, profitability of a business and make the customer experience better. So what we did was step one was developing a comprehensive data strategy and that was all about organizing, democratizing and monetizing our data assets. Right, and step two was then we went about the monetization part in a very disciplined way. We built a data science lab where we can quickly do a lot of rapid prototyping, look at the, any idea in machine learning data science, incubate it, validate it, and finally it was ready for production. So before you get too far, so I'm curious on the, that first yeah. stage, right? right? So you've got all this data, you've been yes. collecting it forever. Right. Suddenly now you're going to Take, take an organized approach Absolute, to it. Yeah, yeah. What did you find in that first step when you actually right. tried to put a little right. synthesis and process around right. what you already had? Well, the biggest challenge was the data came from different sources, right? So we do have a lot of internal data assets, but we are in the business with, you know, we do have get a lot of external data. Think about the credit bureaus, right? Also, we have a co-brand business where we work with partners like Uber. Imagine the kind of data we get from them. We have data from American Airlines. So idea was to create a data governance structure. Uh, we formed a chief data office, the officer kind of uh, forum. We got all the people across the organization to get understand the value of data. We are a data-driven company, as you said, but it took us a while to you know, take that approach and importance of data. And you know, then data and analytics need to be embedded in the organizational right, DNA. Right. And that's what we kind of focus on first. Get the awareness of importance of data, importance of governance as well. And then we could think about democratizing and monetizing. Organization is the key first. Right, right, well, so, and so how did you organize? How right. was the chief data officer, what did he or right. she, who did he or she report to? Right. How did you organize? Right, so it was directly reporting to our you know, CEO. Into the CEO, uh, not into the CIO. Not into the CRO. We had a technology office, we do kind of have a line of sight or dotted line with technology, but we made sure that that office has a lot of uh, high level organization buy-in, they were given budgets to make sure that the data governance was uh, in place. Key was to get data ownership going, right? We were using a lot of data, but there are no data ownership. right? And that was the key. Once we know that who actually owned this data, then you can establish a governance framework, then you can establish how do we use this data, 
and then how do we monetize so it? So who owned it before you went through this exercise? There wasn't, just kind of, yeah, just there kind there wasn't there. a clear ownership, right. right? And that's the key for us. So once you establish ownership, then be, it becomes asset. Right. We were not treating data as an asset. So that was a change in kind of mindset that we had to go through, that data is an asset, asset and it was yeah. used as a means to an end rather than an asset. Right. Well, what about the conflict with the governance people? Because I'm sure right. I'm sure there was a lot of, wait, 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 right. you know, we just can't open this up to just right. anybody. Right. Sure, pretty interesting discussion because you have Absolutely. to open it up to more people, Absolutely. but you still have to obviously follow the regs. Right, and that's where there are a lot of interesting advancement in data science where in the area of data governance, right? There are new tools out there which lets you track who's actually accessing your data, right? So once you have that infrastructure, then you can start figuring out, okay, how do we allow access? How do we actually proliferate that data across different levels of the organization? Because data needs to be in the hands of decision makers, no matter who they are, like could be our CEO, to a somebody who's taking our phone calls. So that democratization piece became so important, and then we can think about how do you, you can't right. directly jump into monetization right. phase before you get your, all the ducks in order. So what was the hardest part, the biggest challenge of that, that right. first phase in organizing the data? Creating that 360 degree view on our customers. We had a lot of in interesting internal data assets, but we were missing big pieces of the puzzles where we're looking at, you're trying to create a 360 degree view on a customer, it does take a while to get that right. And that's where the data, setting of the data governance piece, setting of the CDO office, some of the, those are the more painful, more difficult challenges, but they lay the foundation for all the work that we wanted to do. And it allowed us to kind of think think, think through more methodically about our right. problems, and it established the foundation that we can, now we can take any idea and use it and monetize it for it. So it's interesting, you said you've been on this journey for five years. Right. So, from zero to 100, right. where, where are you on right. your journey, do you think? Right, I think we're just barely scratching the just surface. Just barely scratching the surface. I really barely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I do feel that the data science field itself is evolving. I look at data science as like ever evolving, ever mutating kind of beast. Right. right, and we just started our journey. I think we are off to a good start. We have really good use cases. We started using the data well. We have established the importance of data, and now we have operationalized some of the machine learning data science projects as well. So that's been great, but I do feel there's a lot of untapped potential in this year. Right. And I think it'll only get better. And then what about on the democratization? We just, in, in the keynote today, right. there was a very large retailer. Right. I think he said he had 50 PhDs right. on staff and right. 150 data scientists. Right, right. This is a multi-billion right. dollar Absolutely. retailer. Right. How do you guys deal with you know, the, the, the resource constraints of your own data science team and PhDs right. versus right. trying to democratize the decision making yeah. out to a much broader Absolutely. set of people? So I think the way we thought about this is start really, think big, but start small. right? And what we did was created a data science lab. So what it allowed us to kind of, and it was a cross-functional team of data scientists, data engineers, software developers kind of working together. And that was a primary group. And there was ably supported by our InfoSec guys, our data governance folks, so they're a good support group as well. And with that cross-functional team, now we were able to move from generating an idea to incubating it, to making sure that it has a true commercial value. And once we establish that, then only we move forward with operationalization. So it was more surgical approach rather than spending millions and millions of dollars on something that we are not really sure about. Right, right. So that did help us to manage the resource constraint. Now only the successful concepts were actually taken through operationalization. And we, before operational, we truly knew the bottom line impact. We could know that here's what it means for us and for our consumers. Right. So that's the approach that we took. So, so, we're going to leave it there, but I want to give you the last word. Right. What, what advice would you give for a peer not in the financial services right. industry? They're not watching right. this. Right. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know, in terms of, of doing this, this, this journey, because it's right. obviously it's a big investment. Right. You've been at it for five years. Right. You're saying you barely are getting started. Right. You're in you know, financial services, which is at its base, basically, Absolutely. in information technology Absolutely. industry. Absolutely. What advice do you give your peers? How do they get started? What, what do they do in the dark days? Right. <laughs> What's the biggest challenge? Yeah, I feel like my strong belief is data science is a 
team sport, right? So a lot of people come and ask me, how do you find this unicorn data scientist? And my answer always been that they don't exist. They're figments of imagination. So it's much better to take a cross-functional team with complementary kind of skill set and get them work together. How do you fit different pieces of the puzzles together will determine the success of the program rather than trying to go really big on something. So right. that's uh, the team sport is the key concept here. And if I can, you know, get that word out across, that will be really valuable. All right, well thanks for sharing that uh, very useful piece of insight. Absolutely. All right, Vishal, I'm Jeff Rick. You are watching theCUBE from the Carinium Chief Analytics Officer Summit, San Francisco 2018 at the Park 55. Thanks for watching.